Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel, guys. In this video today, I'm going to be breaking down everything you need to know about your SoRare wallet. How to buy cards, how to sell cards, how to deposit, how to withdraw. A full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do all this with the live screen recordings of me doing the stuff. I'll walk you through it every step of the way. I've been playing Soraya for over two years at this point, and this is by far and away the easiest way to deposit and to withdraw money on Soraya itself. Because Soraya is based in France, whenever you're doing a card transaction, like you'll see in the video today, you will be subject to bank charges for converting your native currency into euros. And for that reason, I always use Monzo for my Soraya transactions. They don't sponsor or promote this content in any way, shape or form at all, but I've got a link in the description of this video here. It's a basic refer a friend one. If you sign up and open a Monzo account, I get £5 and you get £5. It's totally free. There's no strings attached. Obviously, we do all the T's and C's. I'm no ambassador or anything like that for them. But I do find our service very easy to use and very user-friendly. And as you'll see in the video on mobile, very so rare friendly. And when it comes to handling all my cryptocurrency for when we're doing withdrawals, the best app I've used is Coinbase. Coinbase is very mobile friendly and again, like you'll see in the video today, is very so rare friendly as well. Again, they don't sponsor or promote this content in any way, but I've got a refer a friend link in the description of this video if you're looking to open a Coinbase account to make any of your deposits or withdrawals. By clicking on that link, once you've spent $100 on any cryptocurrency, you'll get $10 worth of Bitcoin for free. So if you require any of these services and please do use the links in the description of this video. They go a long way to helping me, believe it or not, and they'll make your life a hell of a lot easier. And I'm saying that from my own personal experience. Of course, if you're new to Soraya and you're yet to open your account, there'll also be a link in the description of the video down below so you can open up your account and get a free limited once you've bought five from the market. If you get stuck, if you have any questions, obviously feel free to hit me up in the comment section regarding anything. And make sure to check out the rest of this playlist, new to Soraya start here, because there's probably a tutorial on any facet of the game that you might be stuck on. At any point, in the video if you do laugh you learn you like something or whatever please do like and subscribe to the channel share and retweet and all that good stuff guys stay out of trouble and let's just get stuck right into it there's two primary ways you're going to deposit and get money onto so rare to buy cards the first one quite simply is buying new cards directly from the new card auctions this is where so rare sell their cards to the highest bidder on public auction and as you can see here, the auctions are going all the time for different cards and different leagues at different scarcities. Now, even if you've got no money in your wallet at the moment, you can bid on these cards directly from your bank. Once we click on bid, it's going to give us the option to do it with Ethereum in our wallet, which we don't have, or through our card. You put in your bank details here. It does give you the option to check out the value of the recent transactions for this card, just to make sure that you know you're spending a commensary amount of money for the card in question. We click on the bid button and then it's going to take you into the security process for making a bid on the auction. Now, the first time you've done this, your bank might raise it as a transaction or so because it is spending money that's going to get converted into cryptocurrency to buy an NFT. And because of the way websites and such are categorized, your website might flag this as maybe a suspicious transaction the first time you do it. So please do bear that in mind. But it is to protect you from stuff that could go bad, you know, so it's kind of a good thing, I suppose. Now, on the secondary market or what's listed on the SoRare website is manager sales. You can also buy cards through the exact same method. But because you're buying here from another person, you're buying here from another SoRare manager for an NFT that's been already minted and someone has already bought, when you go in to buy it, you're going to be subject to extra card fees here. It's normally a percentage-based thing. And as you can see, it's not small. It's quite a sizable amount, 10%. Now, buying cards directly from, from your bank card is totally fine, very easy, very straightforward when doing it from the primary market. And like I mentioned in the introduction, the only thing you need to worry about is any transaction fees your bank might hit you on for changing currencies around internationally. If you want to escape all of those fees, the best way is to deposit directly into your SoRare wallet. They've got two native ways of doing it. I always use Ramp and I find it very easy to do on mobile. We're going to click on the wallet icon at the top of the screen then add funds and then buy card and bank transfer and then ramp and then everything from here kind of takes over you decide exactly how much you're going to deposit whether it be in pounds or ethereum however you want to think of it as you confirm your details they're going to send you a security code this has been sped up but it's not too far off real time and this is just to make sure it's a secure transaction no no one stole your bank details or any of that kind of stuff you know uh, overall to get from beginning to end process like you've seen here it's all quite straightforward and all happens on the SoRare app my bank, Monzo, are very good for mobile phone verification security. I don't need to speak to any call centers or anything like that. And as you can see here, it's all done in a slightly sped up way very, very quickly. This whole transaction from start to finish has maybe taken eight minutes or something. 
And as you can see, the money has been deposited into the wallet there. Now, if you want to go into the secondary market, like I just showed you there, buying from your bank, there's huge fees there attached. But once that money is then deposited, we're then not worrying about transaction fees on changing currency or the 10% levy that so rare have from buying from another manager on the market by using our credit card. We've now got Ethereum in our wallet to the valuation that you've just deposited with in your fiat currency. And then again, it's quite as simple as going onto the secondary market, finding the card you want and spending the money and acquiring the card as easy as that. Now, when it comes to selling cards, it's very important that you understand the valuation of the card you're trying to sell and you make sure you deal with any offers or any counter offers when you're not distracted, you're not getting off the bus, you're not just finishing work and running out the door, you're not sitting at a red light or something, you know. So if we're going to sell a card, the we can have a direct message, a direct offer from someone without even having any of the cards listed. If you link Twitter and Discord to your so rare page, so rare managers and scouts from around the world might just directly message you and say, oh, I seen you had that card. I know it's not for sale, but would you be interested in whatever the deal is that they've got to offer? So that's a way that can happen kind of spontaneously, whether you're listing the card or not. But if you want to list a card on the market, we're just going to click on the guy here and then quite simply, you've got an option here to list my cards. Now, there is another option here to set a minimum price. Now, this is a great tactic to kind of ward away those trolls that might try and get you on a stupid deal. So if you have cards that you have a good value against and you don't, you know, you just never want to sell them for a certain price, you can say here and you can keep it secret if you want, or you can make it be known so that anyone who is interested in it knows if you want this card off me, you're going to be paying a minimum of X, then you understand that. But if we're going to list a card, it's quite simply just list my card and then you can choose in your native fiat currency. I always do things in Ethereum. Uh, just because that's just that's just how long I've been playing the game for. So you select how much you want to sell the card for. There's no market fee for this transaction, and it tells you how much you'll receive net if the sales is to go through. And you can decide for how long you want to list it for. And also you can see how much this thing is sold for recently, if you want to consider that also. Anyway, just hit the list button, confirm, and then hit our password. All notifications, if you receive if you do sell a player at any point, you'll receive an email notification as well as at this bell icon, you should get notifications here about train uh, about offers that are accepted counter offers offers that are rejected etc so always double check your emails and always double check your notifications on cards that are listed as well as direct offers that you're receiving because again sometimes people can be quite creative with how they try and acquire cards below market value and i just don't want to hear anyone on the channel uh, getting the raw end of the deal so we kind of warning there as it were now when it comes to withdrawals i've had thousands of dms over the years and i had a very good how to withdraw video but it was long overdue uh, an update so but it's never been easier to actually withdraw like i mentioned in the intro the two kind of main partner accounts if you like that i use to move money and withdraw and all that kind of stuff makes it it's never been any easier to be quite honest with you so withdrawing on mobile is quite similar to depositing we're going to hit the wallet icon hit withdraw and then it's going to ask us where we want to send the money to now if you've got coinbase on mobile all you need to do is go and find the app for it this is just the basic coinbase app on mobile phone you're then going to look for your ethereum address okay so we're looking to get into receive we press receive and it's then going to give us all these warnings and pop-ups to make sure that we select the correct currency that we want to receive in this case it's ethereum and again we got lots of pop-ups and warnings to make sure they get the correct address we're going to hit copy and then we're just going to slide into the next window and hit paste easy as that we then need to decide how much we're going to withdraw from our balance i'm just going to do withdraw everything that's here we then get this little review confirm you want to do this to this address send activate with password and then you'll get this notification at the top of your screen followed by an email to confirm it on the SoRare API. We're gonna open up that email and there's a link in that, confirm withdrawal. We need to click that or it won't go any further and then you'll be met with this gray text. This then takes a good couple of minutes. It can sometimes take about an hour, but you'll then get a notification from Coinbase saying we've received your Ethereum and we're waiting on some network stuff to complete the transaction to verify that's your money. And then when that happens, maybe about five minutes later or so, the money is then in your wallet. What we now need to do, but is sell that Ethereum. So we're gonna go into Ethereum, sell Ethereum. And this is gonna be the first time that we're actually experiencing a fee with the withdrawal process as the fee here, £2.99 to sell our Ethereum on the Coinbase platform. That's the only thing we're doing with Coinbase here. And then we've sold our Ethereum, we've turned it back into pound notes. And then we're looking for the cash out button. We go into our main balance and you'll see it there in gray, cash out. We're gonna hit max. 
And then, as you can see here, three bank withdrawals into the bank itself using the sort code and account number for the Monzo. We hit confirm and withdraw. Again, no fees accrued here at all except for selling the Ethereum itself on the Coinbase platform. And then we hit confirm. These little dots pop around for a second and this sequence has not been shortened. This is the exact real-time sequence of how quick. That says confirm and you'll see my drop-down notification, money is in Monzo. That quickly, that easily. The last things I'd put in this video as a disclaimer is always be wary of where you're actually holding your money. There's been some massive controversy in the cryptocurrency community over the last 12 months with other companies like Coinbase going defunct. And if you're holding balances on these websites when they go down, then the money disappears with them. So I only use Coinbase to do direct withdrawals and deposits. I don't leave any money around there. I leave all my money in my bank on SoRare. And if I am going to store cold Ethereum, then I use a wallet from a company called Ledger, and it's a cold storage thing. I'm not gonna explain that or bend your ear about it. If you're interested in cold storage of cryptocurrency, there's tons of experts on YouTube you can find that can explain Ledger and that kind of stuff to you a bit better than I. But like I say, if you have any questions that you stuck, hit me up in the comment section down below. I hope you have enjoyed this one. I hope it was useful. Feel free to share it with as many people as you like. Feel free to rewatch it as often as you like or as often as you need as well. Stay out of trouble, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, bye-bye.